What I wanted was a preschool curriculum that was literature-based so that we could spend lots of time reading a great variety of stories. What I wanted was a preschool curriculum that was focused on building life skills and having conversations about the big emotions that toddlers and preschoolers experience, responding to those emotions, and building some of the basic skills of living well with others, and conversations about just understanding this big and amazing world we live in. I wanted a preschool that had all those fun themed units without making them super overly cutesy and complicated. I wanted something that was easy to use. So I created it. Hi, I am Rachel at Seven and All. And in today's video, I am going to be sharing about a preschool curriculum with you. And this curriculum is available in both Spanish and in English. And I have made a lot of curriculum videos on this channel, but this one is very special because this is the curriculum that I have written and developed myself and is now being sold on our website, whereedyoulearnthat.com. So in this video, I'm going to give you an in-depth look inside the purely preschool units or puramente preescolar if you're here for the Spanish version and I'm going to be sharing with you exactly my heart behind it, what you can expect from each unit and how it's being used. I want you to feel like you understand this program so that you can see if it might be a right fit for you and for your family. So as I mentioned in my intro, this is a literature based preschool curriculum. It is not primarily focused on learning the alphabet and learning number skills. Um, I have looked at a lot of different preschool curriculums over the past year and I've really come into my own heart and my own ideas for what I want preschool to look like and I decided that really letters and numbers are not what I want the heart of my preschool to be, the main goal of my preschool. I have a feeling that we're just going to pretty much naturally through slow exposure, through games and so on, I think they're naturally going to get the hang of those in the right time. But during this season of preschool, I knew I really wanted to focus in on story, on understanding stories, building vocabulary through stories, building understanding of the world and my child's place in the world and how they can choose to respond to the happenings around them in preschool. I wanted to have this and that's why I made it. <laughs> so. Um, I also, I always thought that like the different themes for preschool were so cute, like a farm theme or a bee theme or any type of different little theme. I thought that was really fun. But I'm a minimalist and I don't tend to have a whole bunch of random stuff around my house. So when I, my son loves ants and when I look up, okay, how to do an ants preschool theme, I feel like the activities are often something like make an ant out of an egg carton and black paint and googly eyes and a pipe cleaner or pipe cleaners. And first of all, I'm like, who even has cardboard egg cartons anymore? Okay, so I gotta cut that out after I get it, then I gotta paint it, punch holes in it, put in pipe cleaners for legs. Wait, can my preschooler actually do any of this or is this me creating an egg carton that looks like an ant for some reason that I'm not sure we're even learning all that much about ants while doing this? So I was like, there has to be a better way. There has to be a way that we can do themes without it being like, turn a paper plate into a butterfly. <laughs> In, turn a paper plate into basically any animal that exists. Like, I, I like crafts and I know we, we do need some crafts for kids, but I wanted to kind of streamline it and simplify it. I wanted some printables, you know, themed fun worksheets, some worksheets, but I didn't want 75 plus pages of bee themed worksheets. I just wanted a few. I wanted to keep it simple. And I wanted something that was very easy to use because I think preschool is much more likely to happen when it's easy. When you can simply just pick it up and go and you don't have to look around and gather 15 different supplies and prep and cut out a whole bunch of stuff and a whole bunch of manipulatives ahead of time. You can just open it and go. And that's what I created. And I did create it in two languages. And I don't want you to think that the Spanish version is an afterthought. This um, curriculum was originally only going to be puramente preescolar, uh, literature-based learning in Spanish. Um, 
because that's really where my I saw the big need for preschool in Spanish um, for people like me who are raising bilingual kids but they don't necessarily have a background in Spanish music and Spanish books for kids but then my friends talked me into writing it in English as well so I said why not let's just write a preschool curriculum in two languages seems easy right <laughs> Um, but I have put so much heart and thought and passion into this and I'm very excited about it. I'm very excited to share it with you today. So I am going to take you now on a look right inside so that you can see how it works, how I've set it up to use it for myself and for my son. And I hope you really enjoy. Now at the time when I'm filming this video, there are only two units released for Purely Preschool, Spring and Insects. The next unit um, that will be released very soon will be summer and transportation is coming as well. So the way that this works is each unit has four lessons and each lesson is designed to last about one week. So you have a one week lesson that you just kind of gradually get done over the course of a week. I'm going to take you on a look inside the unit so you can see what it's like. I have a couple page welcome note that really explains the heart behind um, the curriculum and how it works, what is included in each lesson. So there's always a story time. I include two books in the lessons and I do include a book list which I'll show you in a minute. But um, while I do believe that reading from physical books is the best way to experience um, picture books with your young child, I actually do include YouTube video links to YouTube read-alouds for each book that's included so that it's you're not struggling if you can't find a book and then feeling like you can't do this lesson. I include the links so that you will be able to do the lessons even if you are just using the YouTube links. So, and then I have a talk about it, a simple discussion question related to the story. Of course, you can be asking many questions and pointing out many things as you go through the story with your child. And a little alphabet activity. It is not systematic phonics, but some kind of tie into the alphabet, always building exposure and familiarity. There's simple math about counting or shapes or comparisons. A let's play, some kind of really active game. Music or poetry, there's a little song. Um, in the English edition, most of them are very just classic children's songs. In the Spanish edition, I have a variety between some classic songs and also some um, newer, uh, more Latin American artists that create music for children. Uh, science and social studies, this is typically a learning statement. So you can recognize learning statements because they are underlined in the lesson. And you can use these in different ways depending on your child's uh, verbal ability. So for some preschoolers who are very big talkers, <laughs> you can have them work on memorizing the full statement. For those who aren't talking quite as much, and that's probably what I'll be doing with my son, especially because he's not really speaking in complete sentences in Spanish, I'll probably be like prompting him but having him fill in key words, at least at the beginning of using these um, learning statements until he's able to start really l learning the full sentences. Uh, but he's done really well through repetition and memory work at building his verbal skills. So I wanted to include that type of thing. We've got fine or gross motor skills activities, always life skills, which is a big passion for me. If you've watched my channel, you probably know this is a passion. Health and safety, these are um, little reminders to have discussions about safety rules or learning statements for your child to memorize, practice. I do have a, just a little Bible verse tie in I, I do talk about in here for actual Bible for your preschooler. I really recommend just reading, reading through a Bible storybook with them, including them in family devotions. So for your actual Bible. So there's no actual Bible things um, in the lessons. But then love homework. While we do have a different Bible verse for each lesson, the overall theme behind this entire preschool curriculum and what I really want um, my sons to learn as they go through preschool is this love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There's no commandment greater than these. It's because of this verse that we incorporate very small little love homework activities. This is the idea that children can actually grow in their ability to love and consider other people. 
And these are all just little practical opportunities for kids to grow in this ability. So, I recommend that each lesson takes a week. Oh, by the way, um, this is our Instagram account, Where'd You Learn That? And if you share um, using our materials, I would love it if you would use our hashtag or tag us on Instagram so that we can see. Our website is www.where'dyoulearnthat.com, so you can go there to see everything in the shop. I include a totally sample weekly schedule. You do not feel you have to follow this, but I wanted to model what the concept of repetition looks like. And I talk about this in, uh, more thoroughly in my welcome message. Um, but I include two books in these units. I don't include 15 books on each topic. I include a very small number of books because what I'm going for here in preschool is learning well and thoroughly and building an attachment and a deep understanding of story. Not um, reading 15 books once, but reading just a few books several times throughout a week. Getting to a point where your child can predict what comes next or Talk about some of the feelings that the different characters are experiencing. Talk about the experiences that they've had. So there's actually only a few. It's not a long list of books, but it is designed to be repetition so that we can reach a point of deep understanding with these simple picture books. I also talk about how you can, you can do an activity once, but you can also repeat it. Whether your child really enjoyed that activity or maybe whether it was a little bit challenging for them, you can repeat an activity throughout the week. I suggest um, doing the song every single day of the week. I suggest working on your science and health and safety statements each day of the week. But the different activities, I kind of suggest rotating through until you've checked off the different activities. And we do start with a book list. This is for spring. So that you can go ahead and get these from your library or purchase them um, ahead of time before you start the unit if you want to. And you'll notice that sometimes I just include an extra third book um, just because sometimes I cannot resist. I do, I do love books. I include a supply list, which I really work hard to keep the supply. I want things to be hands-on and fun, but I also want to make sure that supplies are very um, minimal and something that's not too unlikely that you would have around the home. And I am a minimalist, so the things I tend to have around my home are maybe kind of few. <laughs> So hopefully, my, if, if it's on my supply list, it should be not too completely out of the ordinary to have at home. Um, and then if there's anything that's for an extra activity, I just say that's totally optional right from the get-go. Because some, some families are going to want to do you know the extras, and some are like, I don't got time for that. So this is the lesson layout. You can see it's very simple and straightforward. We have our two books that you can read throughout the week. The talk about it question, simple alphabet activity, which has a coordinated page. Just a second. There's our page um, for the alphabet activity. It's E for egg, early math. Count how many eggs you have in your kitchen. So there's no worksheet for that. It's just go to your kitchen. Do you have any eggs? If you don't have any eggs, the number is zero. Zero is a great number to <laughs> talk about. Let's play. Now this one does have an associated worksheet with it. And that is right here. So these are all animals from the little storybook. Mm -hmm. And then the music is Old MacDonald. Our science statement is chicks hatch from eggs. We've got a little motor skills activity. This is related to the story. Life skills, just a very simple, basic life skill, good to practice. Pour water into glasses or cups. Health and safety is a statement, memory statement your child can learn how to say on their own. I clean up my toys after I play. Um, love homework is a way to be considerate. Start thinking about other people. Preschoolers are often very focused on themselves and their own interests, their own likes, but it's a great skill to build being able to ask someone else a question about themselves. And then I do always include a couple of extras. Most of my activities I try to keep very easy, very open and go, no prep. The extras is anything that might involve a slight amount of preparation. So I include these for the people who just really enjoy extra things. Um, but I don't, 
I, I purposely label them as extra so that you aren't feeling like, oh no, I'm not doing the curriculum because I didn't get around to the extras. I'm like, for me, when I do this, I'm probably not gonna dye Easter eggs because all of our eggs here are like brown. It's not very easy to dye them. <laughs> um, but each family has their own resources and own preferences, so I do include that. And then we have always our little cue cards, uh, visual cards is what I call them for our learning statements. So these you can have throughout the week and from the picture your child should be able to gradually remember and say the complete sentence, chicks hatch from eggs. Or I pick up my toys after I play. And that is a lesson. So that's how they work. I'll take you just a little bit more inside so you can see some of the variety. That was all chicks. Then we have rain. Here are our two, um, our science and then our health and safety statements for rain. Got our books and our activities here. The cutting out activity, gardens, science and health and safety. Oh, and I forgot to mention also our music always does come with a YouTube version. As much as possible, I tried to choose um, music videos that did not actually have videos. I wasn't always able to find a good music recording that didn't have a video because sometimes I find if there's a video that can be a little bit distracting to children with actually listening and singing along because then they get focused on watching the video. Um, so this is part of the gardens lesson. This is the alphabet activity. You can color and cut out the flowers to make a garden out of the G. Oops. This is a sequencing activity based on the story, Lola Plants a Garden. Just cut out and put the happenings in order. This is actually not part of the lesson. This is an extra that's available on our website, The Parts of a Plant. This one is available in three languages. Beautiful watercolor done by my sister. And it comes with plant science learning statements. So this would be a great little add-on to your garden lesson. Then we have rabbits lesson. That's our last lesson for spring. This one has a whole bunch of extras. Apparently I had a whole lot of ideas. <laughs> and usually in about one lesson per unit, I try to include some little piece of classic artwork to kind of explore with your child, talk about, point out, just because I think that's so fun. I often try to, in one lesson, include a piece of classical music to just listen to as well. Because, you know, we're homeschoolers. We love art and music and all that. And then insects is set up in exactly the same way. You're going to have your visual cards, which are all um, like real pho photographs, images. We've got ladybugs, ant hill. Get to cut out the ants and put them in. Parts of an ant. A beehive. All sorts of fun stuff. So that is what you can expect. So you can kind of wrap your mind around that you would be focusing on the focusing on the stories and the music each day, focusing on the health and science um, statements each day, but then the different activities, you just do one or two of those a day. And it's a very light, playful, gentle, but really rich and full of learning activity. And I did want to show you how I've actually set it up for use. I got this binder, which is basically like a three ring binder, just doesn't have the rings. Um, and I've put each individual lesson, I put all the pages for one lesson in one page protector. And I laminated the cards, the visual cards, so that I can use them. Because when, when I like to use, I just know, whenever I use flashcard type of things with my son, I like to hand them to him. We like to do active games. We run across the room, pick them up, say, what, say what's on the card, different things like that. So because we play very actively, and because I have another little boy just a year and a half younger, who I'll be doing this with in a little while, I went ahead and laminated these cards. You wouldn't have to, it just depends on how you're using them. This, by the way, is the free lesson. It's a books themed lesson which has some really cool stories um, for the story time. 
I will be using the Spanish version with my son, which is why the one I've got set up is all in Spanish. So um, you can just see how I've set it up here. The pollitos and lluvia, conejos. This one is gardens, right? Yeah, jardines with my Spanish version of the parts of a plant. Mariposas, hormigas, mariquitas, abejas. So that's all that I've got set up right now. I've got more coming out. If you have any questions about this preschool and how it works, definitely feel free to leave those in the comments or you can message me on Instagram. If you'd like to be kept kind of in the loop about new rela releases and new units coming out, um, you can always sign up for our mailing list and I will leave the sign up for that in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that this was helpful if you're at all thinking about using this kind of program or this kind of approach to preschool. And um, feel free to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Bye!